Farflung Tin Can, we are bridging the gap between two diverse worlds, the Christian home and the mission field, through missions awareness, missions engagement, and worship in everything. We are traveling the world to the most remote places on the planet to find those who have laid down everything to say yes to God. And whoever said missions can't be fun? God is calling. Will you take the call? It's the summer of 2019 and we are headed back to Africa for our fourth year working along Celia and the team and Mama Maria and Gumbani Village in Mozambique. And about half the team have never been to Mozambique, so it was an exciting trip getting there. Are you ready? I'm ready. You're in Africa. I'm excited. So great. You're home. I'm home. Feel kind of sad, but you know. Sad? Yeah. I feel like I'm so sorry. Does, shouldn't you feel good? Family, but I'm excited to be with my far flung. Okay. You didn't really. <laughs> I have bug bites. I got out of the plane. Bug bites on my feet and my legs. We'll have to see what that is. And how much did you sleep in those 15 hours? No, uh, you say I slept. So I said I slept not a single second. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we are doing an assembly line to make an, over a thousand bags for Children's Day here in Africa in Mozambique and Syria. Um, we have popcorn, suckers, candy, glow sticks, whatever you can think of. We are putting it all in a bag and we're going to have it enough for over a thousand kids. Ashley, how many more do you think there are left? And how long have you been at it? <laughs> so right now, we are putting together the bags for um, the bags we are going to hand over the kids. And so we, are, we made an assembly line, and then we are assembling the, the goods, the gifts, the candies and popcorn and, and the fish, fish, the soda. So it's fun. How many are there? We are putting together 1,200 bags. And how excited do you think that they're going to be about them? Oh my god, they're going to be so excited. Some of these, these kids, they don't ever drink these. This is like, we call it it's just like a pop. Some of them don't ever be happy, and then they don't ever have to And this is interesting, um, because they don't ever eat these. So when, they, when they're when they they take over, they take, they take home to give to their siblings. And so that you barely see them open their package when we give them. We never do that. Sometimes we make them do that because we want to make sure that they will eat it because they, they think about their siblings at home and so they won't eat, they won't open it. And then the gold necklaces. And then and a glow necklace that they oh, no, they love, they love it. So here in Gombani we do not have electricity. And in order to get, keep things cold, we use a gas freezer. Um, that means we have to have a gas bottle, and then we light a match, and then however that system works, then we have the, the gas refrigerates the, the freezer. And so we have a freezer in Gumbani, in the middle of the bush, with no electricity, but we managed to keep things cold. When we came to the community of Gumbani, our heart had always been to bless the kids with at least one meal a day, because many kids here don't even have that at their houses. So three years ago, we finally were able to start that. So we started with a number of like about 90 kids. And three years later, now we have, we feed about 200 kids, 230, 200 a day and we have a group that we serve in the morning and then a group in the afternoon. So when the kids come, then we teach them. We have a program, we have a set, up, a set program and where we teach them the Bible. And we, we, teach, we, we go over a bunch of different things, but all uh, aligned with the Bible. And then we feed them a meal 
and in the morning, and then that group goes, and then the other group comes. We are helping the kids right now make necklaces. Um, Anna is uh, one of her activities she's doing. She's given the boys and girls necklaces, and she's also given them beads. Um, the boys have little diamonds, and the girls have little heels. And what she's trying to tell them is that they are sons and daughters, essentially they're princesses, and then she's um, letting the boys know that they are princes. And um, people with the interactive do so when they have these necklaces, they can remember who they are. Right. They were just praying before they were about to eat their rice and beans. One of, one of the strongest teachings we teach the kids is prayer. So we teach them that God is not far away from them, but God is right inside of, of them and they, they can talk to him and they can ask him and they can praise him to have, like, or have a relationship with him. And we have seen results from that and our hearts can, could not be happier with what we have been seeing. The kids learning and, and developing a relationship with the Lord. If you ever get the chance to go with us to Mozambique, Africa, you will remember forever the way they pray. The, not just the adults, but the way the kids pray. It's like they touch heaven in a way that you didn't know was possible. And you actually leave there with this desire to know more about why their prayer was just just seems so deep and so um, I don't know it's just different right now we're dropping the volunteers to the road so they can go to school they come to help us um, with the kids and then we drop them off so that they can because they walk about three miles to get to school Sam you want to go ride in the back with them yeah okay One of the things they do weekly in Gubani is do house visits, pray for people, pray for those that can't come to church, pray for those that are sick, uh, that have just had a newborn. It's such an intimate way to connect with the community. And so I love when we get to jump on the back of the truck and do house visits with them. We just drove over to um, this house and um, we're doing house visits. Mama and Sally do a lot of these. Um, this man is really, really sick and uh, they asked her, uh, team to come over and pray, so we're joining them in prayer today. And even in a, just a block house with no electricity, sitting there in the dark praying over people, you feel the Lord's presence, and it's just so beautiful. <laughs> One of the greatest problems in this community is the lack of, of uh, drinking water, potable water. So this is one of the areas that I have always been trying to, I have always tried to help with, but I didn't have enough resources, and I tried to to dig a, just a, what they call like a hand well, where they get water from. Uh, it's still going, but it, it's just a little bit of water. So two years ago, uh, through Far Flung, we were, um, donated the truck that was in our heart and in our prayers. So we have, with that truck, we bring water from outside the community, from the city, and we were able to build uh, four water towers that holds about 3,000 gallons of water. 
and we have the cistern here in the church. So we bring the, the water um, uh, once, twice, three times a week according to what the resources we have because um, the water generates the, the, the money to buy water. It covers the water, but we need to pay the driver, we need to do the maintenance of the truck. So each family uh, it can have three of these containers of water, which is about 60 liters, um, and that's all the water they have, the, the drinking water they have. The government has dug a well, which is uh, really, really salty water, 20 times more salt than the seawater. So they use that water that the government provides through a well to wash clothes, to bathe, um, but this is the water they have, uh, the only water they have for drinking and cooking. She was just explaining that she doesn't walk very fast to get here. In her case, it's just like five minutes away. But she was saying that other people that drink water here, they, 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 they walk 40 to 50 minutes to get here. I was asking, is it enough? She, she's mad and said it's not enough. It's not enough, but she's very grateful and then they all are very, very grateful to have, even if it's not enough for their needs, but still they're grateful because before this they didn't have, so they're very grateful. We're headed to uh, deeper. Because we need fire. So we're headed on off the roads that are already on the roads that don't even exist. We just made them. Well, we want heat for anything. Heat up our food, heat up our water, uh, cook anything. Um, coffee. You have to have fire to cook it with. You can't have fire without wood. The tear pump took out my eye. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm gonna have an eye patch on the rest of our trip. <laughs> I'm so oh, sorry. Oh, and she ate Carolyn. I want mama near her. We cook with um, wood. We have an um, wood oven. However, you understand by that. You can see the picture of it. And so we need wood to cook. So we. This is our daily routine. I mean, we don't do that every day, but that's what we do. We come and get wood from time to time, once a week or every 10 days. So then we're getting wood now to cook. That's the, the wood guy, huh? That's the wood guy. <laughs> On Tuesday nights, there's usually a service, and it was cool to have Samuel preach the service and be with them. I just love church services in Gumbani. There's always a good turnout. There's always tons of prayer. There's always tons of joy. Like, their church is such a healthy church. And it was awesome seeing a youth preach that service, and, and Celia translated it, and then we had a great altar call where we were able to just meet needs and pray with people and be there with them. I pray that God would open your ears to hear the voice of God. And I pray that as you close your eyes tonight, that you would begin to have dreams. Dreams that God would begin to speak to you. 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 That God would begin and that's what I feel like I'm here for tonight. What's going on? Sorry. There's well, what is going on? I don't, we don't know. There's we were water. rushed out of service after <laughs> youth service tonight. <laughs> Gosh. And I thought they were like making us come home or come back to mama's house. Mm. And then they said, we have to leave. Mm. So we're leaving, going to dinner at 
At an amazing restaurant. At an amazing oh, restaurant. So I'll yes. take that. So here we go. What kind of food? Uh, uh, what kind of food? Yeah. Uh, Mozambican food. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on and where we are? No, because I don't know how to say it. Vicente. Vicente? Uh -huh. With a V? Mm -hmm. Okay. How do I look? Mm. Just go with it. Just say it's really late. <laughs> go ahead. So we are at Vicente. 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 I said that. You said Vicente. Now you got me as a. Vicente. Vicente. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's, it's very late. We are at Vicente's Vicente house, and he has made a feast for us, and we're very thankful. <laughs> program here we also have a sewing program where we make some of these bags um, to, to bless Marta that makes it and then this is the income she has but also with the profit that we get from this and we are able to help uh, our project help the kids with the feeding program and help the, to actually maintain what we are doing here. So it's a program that we are in the beginning phase, but it has already been a lot. We are having another feeding day with kids. And we have had the best time serving them, taking pictures of them, they're posing. But they love this food. Today they are having a chicken legs to eat. And they are walking around with it sticking out of their mouth like it's the best thing ever. And I'm learning so much about how to eat chicken legs here. <laughs> How was today? It was great. A little more descriptive than that? Um, it was very dusty, very <laughs> fun. Okay, back. Maybe a little more descriptive of the festivities. Um, we had lots of games. We had some hair paint going on. We had some bows. Did you get your hair painted? 
I did not get my hair painted. Mm, not a team player. I not a team player. Like, I was trying to let the kids go first and get their shots. Oh, yeah. Ciao. Ciao. Leaving. Uh, we just got done helping out with the feeding program with the kids. Whoa. And um, <laughs> Hold on, let me focus. <laughs> And uh, we are going to do some home visits to go pray for some people that have been sick and have some needs. So we are getting back in the truck, heading to go do that. Yes. 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 <laughs> we came to visit a lady from our church that has been sick since June last year, um, basically a year. and. Um, so she was in Maputo being treated. She was two months in the hospital, but uh, she's coming back now to her house in the community. And we are very happy because um, she has, she's almost completely better. So we are very happy to see that she has improved a lot in her health. Many times she calls saying, Mama, I'm dying, I'm dying. Call, call Mama Maria and say goodbye because I'm dying. But now she's here. She didn't die. Praise God. We came to visit a lady from our church that has been sick since June last year, um, basically a year. And um, so she was in Maputo being treated. She was two months in the hospital, but uh, she's coming back now to her house in the community. And we are very happy because um, she has, she's almost completely better. So we are very happy to see that she has improved a lot in her health. Many times she calls saying, Mama, I'm dying, I'm dying. Call, call Mama Maria and say goodbye because I'm dying, but now she's here. She didn't die. Praise God. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't sit, I couldn't do anything. We're gonna pray to see get completely better. Oh, there was another lady that we saw when we did home visits, and her family would, um, she couldn't walk and was having trouble uh, getting around. There was some problems, I think, with her heart, maybe. And so her family would carry her out on a mat during the day to lay in the sunshine and carry her in at night to sleep. But I just remember um, as we prayed that she just felt so encouraged, and her family did too. And um, she had said that she felt better when we left. One of the house visits that I got to go on was a woman who was supposed to have given birth um, probably about like a week or two before we were there. And they had sent her home. She was in a lot of pain. On the 24th of last month, and today is the 4th of June, and, and the baby's still not born. So, and she's in pain and she went to the hospital twice by now. So they just sent her home and pretty much said, Good luck. We hope everything turns out okay. So we came to pray for her and believe a miraculous intervention. And my prayer is that the baby still alive and healthy. And um, so we believe in the miracle. But the people here, uh, most of the people here, they only have Jesus to rely on because the hospital that should help them, sometimes it's the very thing that failed them. So they, they rely on Jesus, and, and this is our role in this community. So um, a lot of people come to us as a hospital, and we have Jesus to offer them. And we have seen miracles, and this is, this is um, one of the, um, the greatest rewards we have here is to see him in action when people have nothing else. Is it, and we prayed for Enya, uh, the lady that God healed at the crusade and her healing is being shown now so martha was just telling me now that her niece was in the classroom just now and a little girl asked for prayer for her dad and she cried and asked the class to pray for her dad because she said that her dad got a problem in his eye and he she was scared that he's gonna lose his job and they're gonna go hungry now so the niece, or Enya's niece, said, another child said, oh, but you must believe because my auntie was so sick, she could not walk. And um, they prayed for her at the crusade and now she's healed. She can walk and she can, she, she's just getting stronger and stronger by the day. I was so blessed to hear Martha now. This just happened like 
today that we prayed for Anya and heard that she's better and her niece said the same thing in the classroom with the kids. Um, what I want to point out here is that what God is doing through this culture of prayer we're creating is that not only um, He is doing it, but even the kids are seeing it. It's been a testimony to the families, it's been a testimony to the kids, it's been a testimony to the whole community. So I am really, really blessed to hear that, so I wanted to share it as well. Farfling Tin Can is spreading the gospel and helping others in the most remote places on earth. Our work in Mozambique is ongoing and you can be a part. You can apply to join us on our monthly far-flung trips, or you can help send us to far-flung places by giving. We believe our children should be thinking about the Great Commission. Be sure to purchase Adventures with Far-Flung, Salia's Sunflowers, based around the real-life ministry in this episode.